All right, we are here with Dawn and her daughter, Chelsea, who is 13 and a half years old. Yeah. And um, Dawn, can you tell us a little bit about um, Chelsea's diagnosis to start out with? Okay. Kelsey was Kelsey. diagnosed at nine months. We started realizing though at four months that she wasn't seeing like normal children and she couldn't eat like normal children and she wasn't making some of the typical noises. So we started a battery of tests and basically by nine months we found out she had cerebral palsy and basically they think what happened was she had the cord wrapped around her neck in utero at some time just long yeah. enough to cut the oxygen off to her brain and that's what kind of... Mm -hmm. And so her medical diagnosis is um, cerebral, cerebral palsy. palsy. Spastic quadriplegic which is quadriplegia, excuse me, mm -hmm. which yeah. is tight and loosey-goosey, mm -hmm. basically a combination of, and she's failure to thrive. Okay. Um, and you can see at 13 and a half, not so She is, a, we were just saying, a very petite girl. <laughs> and uh, quadriplegia means that she does have her tone um, that fluctuates from tight to looseness in both, both arms and both legs, so all, all four of her limbs. Um, so this does limit some of her mobility and ability to move around. So she um, relies on a wheelchair or um, as assistance from adults to move, move um, from one place to the other. But I'm assuming she moves on the floor on her own she to some degree. She moves around on the floor, not as much as we'd like, but if she really wants something, she will. But she's found a newfound independence. This wheelchair is old. She's had this since kindergarten, and this is a whole other story we can get into <laughs> with the <laughs> equipment system. But she's had this since kindergarten. She's been due for a new one for over a year. We're still waiting a year and two months later, but she is very mm. independent. She'll go into the bedroom. She mm. now listens to voices. She loves her dad dearly, mm -hmm. but he likes to watch TV. And if she goes Ashton and I are somewhere else, <laughs> she will. <laughs> her She'll just come out of the blue. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> she likes that independence. Yeah, and so she is able to propel her wheelchair independently and go where she desires. And you had told me at one time that you set up your home so that she would have greater independence um, with a floor plan that allowed her more availability to all the rooms in the house. If you would like to, we can even show you what the things. Yeah, I mean, we can go up to the bathroom and and look yeah. at some of the ways. So. Kelsey, I called you the wrong name. I'm, you oh, should hate okay. me now. <laughs> I know, Marissa gets mad at me all the time when I do that. Um, she is now in middle school. So um, I know I knew Kelsey when she was younger, mostly in grade school, and now she's moved on to that glorious years in seventh grade. <laughs> and um, I know uh, one of the things we're talking about is accessibility within a school. And she does go to a school that's one level. Mm -hmm. But have you run into um, any new, because uh, the grade school was new mm -hmm. and the middle school, high school is an older building. But we still have, even mm -hmm. with the new building, um, Kelsey's had to pave the way for some things. Mm -hmm. And as a teacher, being in the same school district, it was tough to go and complain about things. I had to kind of bite my tongue at times, but one, for instance, when she was in third grade, I think they moved her out mm -hmm. of a room because they needed it for a classroom. They did not have month heat in there for three months. They kept telling me, send more clothes, send more layers. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking the pairs could even told that. They kind of finally found out that there were no heat ducts that had been tapped into that room. And Kelsey had been going in there for three months. Mm -hmm. And with her not being able to tell me things, mm -hmm. I depend upon the adults and the parents. And I was very upset mm -hmm. when, and it did not get taken care of until I finally went to the superintendent and I said, listen, she's got so many clothes on, she can't wear her wheelchair because she can't get her arms down. Mm -hmm. And the minute I go to the superintendent, I seem to get things done. And it got done. Uh, the same with handicap switch. The preschool kids were playing with the handicap button when they were mm -hmm. waiting for their parents. Mm -hmm. And to me, a teacher, as a teacher, you teach those kids it's not a toy. Mm -hmm. And instead, the teacher is flipping it off because mm -hmm. you can do it manually. So every time we are trying to teach Kelsey how to use the switch... To come in in the morning, it was turned off. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So finally, it came to... I went to head of maintenance. I went to teachers. I did this mm -hmm. for three years. Finally, I just blew my fifth, her fifth grade year when we came in with tons of equipment. And the very first night of school, we couldn't get in. We had all this equipment we're trying to get in and wheel her in. Mm. 
someone who shut it off. I went right to the superintendent, and the very next day they put a block. <laughs> so it's made a difference. But because of that, at the high school, they didn't have handicap buttons on any of the doors. Right. They now do, for Kelsey's sake. And we have another boy who's in a wheelchair, Michael Douglas. Mm -hmm. uh, so they didn't need to think of that anyway beforehand. I think they just assumed that we were going to get them in and out. Well, right. Right, and often um, school districts are mandated by law to provide um, accessible um, environments for all children, um, but often it does take, I've seen that in other school districts too, where it does take um, the advocacy of a, a one family or one parent to get things moving forward before it actually, um, the, the good thing is supposedly more of the new schools are set up to be already um, universally designed, so all children, but again, even in a new school, you had some issues, so um, that's definitely something that... Well, they've done a great job at, with her new physical therapist that we have, the new PT, is super about getting everything for Kelsey. Like, they reaccommodated the whole bathroom for Kelsey. They're looking at doing some other changes to the sinks. Mm -hmm. uh, they did the whole bathroom for her. They they've accommodated every time she's had her surgery they wouldn't accommodate it so you know now it's a matter they work to make things happen if it's not built mm -hmm. that way they work to make sure that something will work right for. and you know it's not perfect but if it works it works right it's right and the whole idea is to allow kelsey to have that independence yeah. to use the bathrooms that are at her school and in mm -hmm. her hall and to you know, be able to do some self-care stuff too. Yes. Yeah, and that, that's a that's a good role for therapists and paraprofessionals to help with the child who does need accommodations. Um, so, um, just real briefly, I know um, you told us a little bit about um, uh, the um, difficulties Kelsey mm -hmm. had um, at birth and resulting in cerebral palsy. So. Um, I know you have an older daughter too, so how did this affect your um, your family's path in life? Mm -hmm. It's affected it a lot. <laughs> it's different. Um, when Ashton was born, I played college sports mm -hmm. and I swore Ashton. I was going to make sure she was good enough and talented mm -hmm. enough to play college sports too. Then after mm -hmm. we had Kelsey, mm -hmm. I realized that didn't matter anymore and it's uh, she's happy. You know, Ashton's never going to be the star of this or that, but she's very happy. And I think she's also more mature than kids her age because she's had to grow up mm -hmm. a lot faster and different from mm -hmm. Kelsey. Uh, but then again, it's a lot like being an only child, mm -hmm. too, because sister doesn't take things away. Sister doesn't get into your makeup. Sister doesn't read your diary, mm -hmm. you know. But there's other things she does do that makes life mm -hmm. different. But it makes us appreciate things a lot more and I think it's made Ashton appreciate things more. Right, right. And I have seen um, Ashton and Kelsey's relationship and they do have a pretty close relationship and uh, Ashton being the older sister is um, is there for Kelsey and Kelsey certainly um, shows a lot of appreciation for um, Ashton's affection and contact. Um, they, they are close and you know even when, when Kelsey was uh, when we were getting our will set up, we were talking about who was going to take care of the girl. That was probably, as a family, one of the hardest decisions you'll make in your whole entire life. Because if Kelsey was typical, it wouldn't have been hard. We know where. But she's not. And so we had to decide who could handle it, who couldn't. And we also had to know that those people that we chose uh, had to be able to feel okay with the fact that if they couldn't handle it at a certain age that we were okay mm -hmm. with them making a decision where they needed help or a facility mm -hmm. with Kelsey. Um, it took us nine years to get a will drawn up and that was only because of that. Otherwise, we couldn't, it took us all those years to figure out where they were going to go. Her, no problem. Mm -hmm. We have it. And then setting up a trust fund where the government couldn't get her money mm -hmm. if we were to die. And that was a whole other issue in itself we had to look at because you know you look at things unfairly you spend all your money on one kid mm. in one way for dance lessons and volleyball <coughs> camps and basketball camps and you feel like you're not spending all that money on your little one well we spend a lot of money for Kelsey in different ways mm -hmm. but the one thing is we know mm. she'll make money down the road she'll mm. be able to pay mm. her way through life Kelsey won't 
so a majority of our will is set up for her. Right. Yeah. And and planning that not just mm -hmm. caregiver for Kelsey's future, but her financial, uh, um, like you said, establishing a financial mm -hmm. security for her. Um, I know in our chapter we talk about that a lot, too, that that is um, a, a big challenge and a, a big fear uh, for parents who have children who will need care the rest of their life. So um, what are the challenges that face the family in terms of finances and the provisions for the child? And we just kind of talked a little bit about that. We also have mentioned um, that you have um, maybe not those monthly expenses with Kelsey, but very large equipment um, that's hard to fund and you're going through a process of uh, possibly um, waiting on um, waiver money and um, the things that come with um, the larger equipment, more expensive needs that, that Kelsey has. We were very fortunate when to have lived in Lawrence when Kelsey was born. Very good infant toddler program had been established. Helped mm -hmm. us get started the minute we found out Kelsey had cerebral palsy as uh, she was nine months. As soon as we got the diagnosis, they put us on the list, which is the HCBS waiver. You, may, you might have the name. Health and community, is it home community base? services, I think, is what it stands for, HCBS. And I just know parents say waiver. <laughs> HCBS waiver. And when she got on that, that put her on the list, but it took us six years for her to get to that list, to the top of the list, and that was in Lawrence. But that list, we don't get money for Kelsey, but what we do get is she had, until this year, which has been a whole nother uh, learning process, she got Medicaid, which covers when you have a three thousand dollar wheelchair, and that's just a simple one. A mobile mobile one can be anywhere from ten, twelve thousand dollars, depending on you know what type it is. It Medicaid helped us cover those expenses. Our insurance would only cover up a thousand dollars to durable medical, which includes her DAFOs, which are a thousand dollars a pair. And when you have, if you've ever trying to buy shoes for a kid, how often they grow. Mm -hmm. That's how often she can get those right. shoes. Right, and they have to have them fit or they'll yeah. have they'll skin problems and feet. yeah. So, um, but anyway, so Medicaid, that was why we got it. Now we still pay like insurance, mm -hmm. we pay like $69 a month, but still $69 a month mm -hmm. for a $3,000, $4,000 dollars wheelchair is nothing when you don't have to come up with all that money up front. Right. right. Uh, some of the other expenses we're looking at, see, uh, we would love to get a van with a handicap lift, mm -hmm. but we've already looked into it. I've looked into it a lot mm -hmm. to buy a brand, not a brand new van, but a good van that would work is $20,000. To get the lift installed and the van lowered is another $20,000. Oh my goodness. So it actually costs more mm -hmm. to handicap accessorize a van if you're lower in the bottom and doing all that so mm -hmm. we've held off on that that's a and that's a finance that insurance does not help you right and, and this is coming from a family who has two professional working parents um, and, and we're not and we do not spend our money frivolous, frivolously right and it's it's a it's a, um, an expense that you need or um, uh, uh, equipment that you need of, uh, that is out of your reach because of the costs of, yeah. until some some other resources come through. Mm -hmm. um, so and and I think too um, we were going to look later. There's all sorts of equipment that um, Kelsey needs for safe bathing. Yes. Um, you know we maybe and braces in, that she wears. She has a special brace that she has to wear at night. Okay. That's very expensive she for her after her surgery because her hip came out. Mm -hmm. Was three years ago they had to break. Her femur is this femur, uh -huh. right? And break the tip of it and put it back into her hip socket because it had wedged its way out. And then they've had pins to set it back. Well, she has to wear a, it's almost a full body or a partial body from mm -hmm. here to here brace, so that doesn't happen. To again. keep her hips in alignment yep. through the night. Yeah. She wore, just got done having a surgery again in January. That's the one thing we're noticing. We did not realize in adolescence with children with their major growths that come, a lot more surgeries come because their bodies aren't growing the way they're, their bodies are growing, but everything else isn't. Right, they're not getting that weight bearing yeah. and some of those um, things that 
the allow them the bones mm -hmm. to grow yeah. and form properly. Well, and you know she eats like no other. She's mm -hmm. a pig. Mm -hmm. She eats as much as any football player. Mm -hmm. Ashton, you can attest for that. <laughs> yeah. um, but because her metabolism from the CP is so, you know, it just eats those calories mm -hmm. away, which takes away a lot of energy mm -hmm. that she would have to do things and stuff. But um, that's. Well, let me ask a couple more questions and then we'll um, have Kelsey show us around. Um, we talked a little bit, um, another path that um, it takes families down a different path is um, sometimes their recreational life. Um, so you've talked to me in the past about this, how it's affected your family vacations. We Family vacation to me is very important. I think that some of the things I remember more than anything growing up were going on family vacations. And if we couldn't take Kelsey on these family vacations, I wasn't going to do it. And so our very first one when we took, we went to uh, San Antonio. The very first thing we did find out, you need to call before you go somewhere ahead of time and see if they're handicap accessible. All things. Like, Kelsey cannot go to Worlds of Fun. They will not let her ride any of the rides mm -hmm. because she cannot ride without a supervisor on the little kitty rides mm -hmm. with someone being with her. On the other hand, we go down to SeaWorld. They were so accommodating. They let me ride every little ride. Because they're a little kid. I mean, I'm not skinny, but, mm. but there are kids that are bigger than me. They were very accommodating to us. Uh, we found water parks that are not accommodating. If Kelsey, they wouldn't let her get into inner tube if she couldn't tube by herself. Mm -hmm. well, we're not going to put her in an inner tube, so we didn't go to a water park. Mm -hmm. But I have to call everywhere we're going to go and I have to do a lot of heavy planning always to find out if it's going to be accessible for Kelsey. We, we wanted to do things that we couldn't do mm -hmm. but if Kelsey wasn't going to be a part of it we were going to do it for like we went up South Dakota and went into the, the caves, the caverns, and wind cave up in South Dakota that's what it was and we would have loved to take the underground pass but they're not handicap accessible and mm -hmm. uh, the one we, we did get to go look at them but it was the only one that had the heaven. Oh yeah, but the, oh, the, the arch. elevator, mm -hmm. yeah, the, they wouldn't let her ride in the arch. So the arch that goes up, the yeah. riding the elevator up the arch, she couldn't do that, and that's nope. a common family. I mean, our family did that too. So we just, we took turns. I had Steve take, I've been up there a lot of times, so Steve and Ashton went up. Oh, Kelsey got patted down. That was really <laughs> funny. When we go in, we're just, well, since 9-11, there's been a big, uh, security issues mm -hmm. at the federal monuments and we waited in line for a long time and then we get up there and Kelsey's setting off all sorts of buzzers uh -huh. so they pull us off to the side and they made me lift her up and they had to pat down like her diaper uh -huh. and everything and the people behind us were like oh my god I can't believe this <laughs> and it's, like, it's no big deal it's actually kind of funny you know uh -huh. And we were actually laughing about it, like Kelsey's on the number one episode. <laughs> and she giggled when they did it. But, you know, we just have to, there's just some things we can't do when, mm -hmm. like, we do really want to someday take a cruise, uh, but it will never happen with Kelsey because we have been, we went, the one and only time we went was for our 16th anniversary because we never thought we'd get to go again. And the handicap accessibility issues that we saw in other countries mm. if you got off that boat. Oh, right. Oh, you think it's the terrible ports. here? Mm -hmm. It's terrible there, mm -hmm. everywhere else. And, and we're not going to put ourselves through that. My husband is more frustrated about things like that than I do, mm -hmm. but we won't put ourselves through that. Right. And we took that cruise with the intent that Kelsey's going to be too big for mm -hmm. our parents. Our parents could still help us out mm -hmm. four year, three, four years ago. And they still help us out now, but my mom, can't. they can't lift her. Right. It's too tough. <coughs> Where you were saying even for just yourself, as um, Kelsey gets older and yeah. um, does start to weigh more, um, that it's getting, and this is, that's pretty characteristic of a lot of families, it gets more and more difficult to um, do those transfers, yeah. especially from a low surface or something like that. We, we try to still do everything ourselves, but it's good. Well, this year, first time ever, at the, in the, I think it was last year, excuse me, they got a handicapped van at school. We've always lifted Kelsey in and out. Yeah, I remember you talking about that last yeah. year, and the bus driver always assisted you with yeah. that. And, and they thought it was inappropriate for him to lift her in now, which uh -huh. it didn't bother us because uh -huh. he just loves Kelsey. Uh -huh. he would, he but would in, in reality, like there may have come a time where it wasn't um, safe it, for it, her or yeah. him to continue to do that. So, 
Um, as we did did say, um, Kelsey has an older sister, Ashton, who's 15. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, Ashton, you Ashton if you want to um, talk us a little bit about maybe, um, you know, we were t saying already that you guys are pretty close. Um, How has it been having uh, Kelsey in the same school building with you? This would be her second year in the same school building with you. Um, it's a lot of fun because I can always hear her smile and laugh down the hallway. Uh -huh. <laughs> we always hear her giggling like two halls down. And then it's really nice when I see people like say hi to her in the hallway. Mm -hmm. So I know that she's being treated good as mm -hmm. well too. Kelsey's actually very popular in our school district and is well known by everyone, both adults and um, um, children around her age. And that's because um, she's been somewhat um, lucky to have a sister fairly close in age who, kn who has friends that know Kelsey too. So that's helped Kelsey as it does with a lot of sisters. Um, but I know I've seen Kelsey in the school um, with um, peer helpers that um, won't just be the adult that's um, assisting. Um, I know I saw this more in the grade school, I'm not so sure now that she's in middle school, but um, often she had um, peers who were partnered up or chosen to help Kelsey um, out to the bus or Kelsey mm -hmm. do um, different things around the school. And I know Kelsey is very social and I always felt like she really loved having the kids with her. And That is even on her IEP. Uh, that being around others mm -hmm. because when she had her major surgery and was out for a month, we actually know she got depressed. Mm -hmm. We know she's going through depression. She loves being with the kids and that's why that's the summer school aspect for her is the social part mm -hmm. of the summer school. And um, and that's fine if that's a, that's just as important in every person's oh, development. Yes. And really it matches her whole family's personality. All of you are fairly outgoing people who you know, socialize with other people and are active. Yeah. Uh, both her parents teach or work in schools, and um, so that would be part of her personality. So, you know, I might add when you were talking about the one thing you will notice, and you'll find that more and more. Yes, kids come up to Kelsey and oh, Kelsey, I like Kelsey. Mm -hmm. But as they get into middle school mm -hmm. and high school. There's less, right? And it's, I think it's just because those kids now it's not a novelty anymore. But also, those kids mm. have so many things going on. Uh, they're teenagers, they're right? All this. And before, when they're younger, I think when we're younger, we tend to care more about others than just ourselves, you know. And I'm not saying it in a bad way. No, it's kind of a natural progression for those preteens. Yeah. It does happen. There's a lot of peer pressure when you get into middle school and. Um, children who um, are supposedly having typical developments can struggle just as much. So um, that can be even more challenging for Kelsey to develop those relationships or any I child. It has changed. Mm -hmm. It has changed. But they're still all very nice to her. I mean, they are. But it, right. it's just not the way it, they would fight over who's good. Now it's the kids in her classroom, Cannon and Jay Lee and Jesse, who fight. And Randy, who's going to push Kelsey. Uh -huh. That's, that's uh -huh. who. And, uh -huh. and she's got a great core group right. in that class. And so that, that's that. that's also... Um, that's challenging for you to have to develop... Um, you know, watching her develop a new social group yeah. um, as she changes schools because technically she did kind of develop a new... It's okay because I feel more comfortable when we go to birthday... She got invited to birthday parties in mm -hmm. elementary. But... And people were really sweet and did that, but they also didn't realize what it took to have her her in front of everybody. Uh -huh. or they'd have it at home. We didn't know if their home was going Right. Home. So well, she didn't ever go. Uh, but, you know, well, we always said thank you. But when it's canon, the kids that are in her class, mm -hmm. those parents know what we're facing. Right. And so we did. We went to a birthday party for one of the boys, and it was so fun, mm -hmm. you know, and it was neat to see. And you don't sometimes, because when she was younger, it was really hard when she had her first birthday. We thought it was the magic, or her third birthday, excuse me. The magical number the doctors told us was, oh, she probably won't walk until she's three. She won't talk until she's three. Mm -hmm. You know, literally, I, I, I'm not kidding. Steve and I, on her third birthday, we just sat there watching, waiting for her to walk or talk. Mm -hmm. And that was the hardest birthday ever, because we knew that wasn't going to happen. And, you know, it's just a, it's a magic number, they tell you. Right. And I think, um, you know, we talk a lot about that, too, um, parents in particular, but all family members can go through 
an ongoing grieving process, um, at milestones especially, or um, events in a, in childhood, such as moving from grade school to to um, a secondary school or first dates or driving and all those things as those come along for your older daughter or for our, um, peers or friends who have kids the same age as Kelsey I know that it's sort of like um, grieving over and over again it's a loss every time and so um, that takes a lot of um, a lot of strength but I, I have heard it it does have um, it does help to have other families who are going through the similar situations to to have the support of families who uh, can really understand and um, aren't avoiding the situation. Um, they often say, but uh, I know in our book we even were reading how um, often families get more support from other families with children with disabilities than they can even get from maybe sometimes their even extended family because yeah. it's so hard for extended families to know what to do or accept or... Steve's mom, <coughs> for the longest time, thought Kelsey was going to walk. You know, she'd always... <laughs> I think she's going to walk. I think mm -hmm. she's, she just couldn't get it in her head that Kelsey's not going to walk. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some days I think she still has that wish and hope. And actually, Steve and I, and I think I talked about this last year, mm -hmm. I don't want you to think we're not faith-based or not hopeful people, but we don't hope anymore because that's the biggest letdown ever. Mm -hmm. Like that, we suffered a huge loss that third mm -hmm. birthday when it should have been a happy day when we realized this isn't going to happen. Right. So we have never hoped again. So now, when she does something, it's a gift. And we yeah. can celebrate it instead of being sad that something didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the way we've changed our life a little bit. It's like, hey, this is great, you know? Because right. otherwise, if we look at... Your perspective's changed, yeah. and you take it day by day and, and appreciate those gains that you can make yeah. uh, without putting too much pressure on yourself. And... Kelsey has made a lot of gains. I think that's oh, a big yeah. thing to be able to move around your home and that you guys have been able to give her that freedom. And um, I know I've worked with, a long time with a lot of kids who even as they get into secondary school still have a lot of trouble with that m mobility. So for her to eventually possibly be looking at even a higher level mobility, like, you know, I don't know if it's in her future or not, to have some type mm -hmm. of... Um, electric wheelchair mm -hmm. or they tried it once and said she was detrimental to the other students. So, so, yeah, they took it away. Her environment is because yeah. 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 But again, a lot of things can happen. Technology mm -hmm. um, has changed the way a lot of children communicate and um, we won't go into everything that Kelsey's probably had as far as um, communication uh, interventions, but I'm sure over the years you've seen her um, ha been able to take um, maybe the opportunities with new technologies to express her wants and needs. Yeah, her buttons. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the recording buttons. Yeah, I love this. The one thing that we've noticed is that, um, what was I going to say about technology? I forgot. Her bunch like help her participate like when she does the musicals. They she gets to say lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, and I just thought of it again. What I was going to say, and I forgot again. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm right there with you, Don. <laughs> well, over the years, you know, Kelsey's probably not going to have a formal communication, but I can tell you, she's got six dis distinctive cries. Okay. Pain. I'm hungry, I'm tired, I just want mommy, I just want someone to hold me, you know, those kind of things. I can, I, we know, I know those cries, what she's wanting, and we just learned that, kind of mm -hmm. like any mom, usually. Right. But that's her communication, just. Like right now, she's as happy as war. <laughs> she should be really tired. <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah, she's starting the days in the <laughs> eyes. Well, let's go ahead and stop, and we'll go to another part of the house and kind of take some. Well, let's see if Kelsey will. You come, see you come all west. We'll get you out there. Come on, babe. Come this way. Come on. Let's go show her your room. You coming? We try not to have too many obstacles, but she's gotten really good at her way of maneuvering is pushing off of things. Oh, yeah. So she uses them to her advantage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, Kelsey. Oh, we got a big bag. Several things on the floor, then we just run over. Mm -hmm. See, that's but she's out to push. 
but she has maneuvered herself inside bathrooms, inside doors, outside doors. Kelsey, I'm excited to see your room. I'm trying to guess how it's decorated. Take a while. <laughs> That's the one thing as a parent, you've got to be patient. Mm -hmm. um, Kelsey helps do laundry, loves to help do laundry, household chores. She wants to feel useful. She really does. And so we try to do things that she can help us with. Like she'll hold the laundry while we're. I think you told me at one time too, she really, um, you've tried to find ways for, since she likes to do the silverware and the silverware yeah. drawers, ways to let her help with that. Yep kind of one of her chores that she knows she owns <laughs> that chore and all of our doors they're all handicap accessible even with this here she's still getting through on a wheelchair so here we room. are but they're telling you kelsey's apparatus here's her night brace she has to wear can you imagine how comfortable that is i know it's amazing kids can sleep in this and then this was her leg brace she just had all of her hamstrings cut on the left leg so we had to keep it immobile. And then what we did is the bathroom, I don't think she's ever gonna be able to slide them herself, mm -hmm. but That's the pocket. it yeah. is open. Yeah. So she can come through here and we can go through there, but Kitty's little boxes are there. <laughs> <laughs> but the and then you were telling me um, you took one of your beds you already had, wanting to get into a more um, regular bed for Kelsey and you cut the legs off of it so it was lowered down so that Kelsey could um, and she can get out of bed she rolls around she'll, yeah she'll get out of bed she knows that's our bedroom uh -huh. she will roll to the door trying to get to us uh -huh. on the other side of the bathroom mm -hmm. okay but it connects right through and then we had oh it's not too dirty in here okay. <laughs> one of the cats that off there. Um, this is where we currently give Kelsey we use the jacuzzi but it's getting too hard to put her in and out mm -hmm. And so we built this with a, it's not oh, yeah. totally mm -hmm. a, a, a roll in or a yeah. walk in. Mm -hmm. So we can do that for Kelsey. But, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> they see. have to be everywhere. Right now it's a temporary. Yeah, that smells the cats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. yeah. So as, as are you, you were telling me you're going to get a um, bath. So this is how she makes her way to your room. Yeah, <laughs> this so is a great lighting. bathroom setup. We well, that's what we had a guy who is actually in a wheelchair designer house. Uh huh. So then it, it comes right in here. But everywhere, she can get everywhere. If we go upstairs, she has to. Um, we go upstairs, we have to carry her. But that's not a big deal. We'll go up and like play games up there. But most of the time, like we'll play, play games, like we play gestures. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, Kelsey will be the prop. Uh huh. <laughs> so, that's the way how Kelsey gets it. Uh huh. In. Play Yahtzee. Kelsey gets to roll all the dice. She Good. Roll yeah. The dice. You know, we figure out a way to incorporate mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. and then there's some games we try to keep her away from because she likes to eat the pieces. Mm -hmm. So, or put them in her mouth. But anyway, so it just. Uh -huh. kind of and you were telling me too, when it comes to equipment, Kelsey's uh, getting to the size where you're going to have to look at not only possibly another vehicle, but a car seat that's um, appropriate for her growing body because she gets even longer and taller. Um, and so that'll be a new challenge and can be a costly piece of equipment too. It's not just something you go out to Walmart and buy. No. <laughs> Which a lot of stuff is not that easy yeah. to get. It is quite a, a challenge. Well, they, they told us, you know, and uh, when you're talking words of advice, be educated about what's out there because I don't know how many parents I've talked to, they'll say, what's this list? What's this list? Oh my gosh. I know people now that have been on the list for nine years because they didn't get on the list. Right. The child was diagnosed. Uh, Do it I'm as worried soon as when she turns 16, she can get on the next list, which will be when she turns 21, to get outside adult. services, okay. adult services. Mm -hmm. So that will be, and that list is anywhere from six to eight. Yeah years probably more by the time and the soonest she can get on it is when she turns 16. yeah that's the yeah. first you can sign up so we are and none of these lists time. are easy there are lots of paperwork yes. lots of lots of lots of forms and requirements that out to keep her on mm -hmm. the waiver mm -hmm. if i don't fill it out we lose the waiver mm -hmm. and then so you start over and you lose the opportunity well, <laughs> and not only do you start over 
Uh, when we were in Lawrence, we actually built this house, but we did not leave Lawrence because we were one from the top. If we would have moved to Wellsville and lived in our house, we would have to go to the bottom of the list of Franklin County. Oh, so we just were waited the house until she came to the top because she was so close. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's amazing that families would have to make those kind of decisions not to move into their new house because it was in a different county. Well, I was just glad I checked. Yeah, that would have been awful if we. And I'm just real educated about the stuff like that because we can't afford to lose our Medicaid. I don't mm -hmm. care if we get anything else. But the HCBS waiver allows, we have like a girl comes in two or three days a week and after school we'll watch her a couple hours. Mm -hmm. It takes care of that. Mm -hmm. And is that considered respite care? Yeah, well it's or is it home it, health care. Okay, home health care. So, but it helps and then I can hire who I want. And do you I get respite care funds for that, or are you just doing it's private all pay? Trinity. Oh, okay. It's all through Trinity. It's through that help that waiver. Okay. Kelsey, they have tiers, five mm -hmm. tier levels. Kelsey's a tier two, which is tier one's the highest, you know, the most. But you don't really get a difference in hours. Mm -hmm. But um, it's been nice because, but uh, to be quite honest, there is nobody we would leave Kelsey with that we'd go very far. Yeah. Except our parents. Yeah. And Ashton, we would, but until Ashton learns to drive. Right. And Ashton. Uh, right. We don't leave, because we've had to leave things before. Mm -hmm. When we had a sitter once, we thought we'd try it. We weren't there more than 10 minutes. We had to come back. Mm -hmm. So, we just... Right, and we live in a rural area, and so emergency care isn't even yeah. um, accessible in a really quick way. The good thing, Kelsey, is you're such a healthy girl. And I'm glad you're not on tier one because that would mean you have a lot of medical equipment attached to you. So we're thankful for that That's and uh, that um, it, it hasn't limited her spirit. And um, she does, for the most part, other than the multiple surgeries she has to go through. And I don't know, does she get, um, is she more susceptible to respiratory illnesses or? As soon as she starts a cold, we get her on saline breathing. Okay. Treatments, I'll be roll. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't kept her out of school well, to some extent. We it has. Had, what did we have last year? Whooping cough. We oh. had the worst case in Franklin County. Oh. And as soon as we, I didn't know what whooping cough entailed. Oh, she missed tons and tons of school. Okay. Tons. So. And she had whooping cough for over seven months. Okay. Wow. She was still coughing from. February, she was still coughing in August. Mm -hmm. so. And a lot of that has to do with muscle tones a yes. lot of times too and um, being able to keep your body upright and um, the strength of your... The one thing I was going to say, uh, Peggy, we talked about a little bit. You know, some people can't tell, like, when we go to church, we take Kelsey to church with us. Um, it works my husband up more than me because some places we go don't care for noise mm -hmm. in the church, whereas we'll go other places they don't care. Right. I personally, I can deal with it and I'm okay with it. It makes my husband nervous. Mm -hmm. But when we would, well, we just started taking Kelsey in the wheelchair into church probably the last eight months. Yeah, and I noticed that. Um, otherwise, she sat next to you in the pew, which Kelsey can, hold, um, have, does have good sitting balance on a bench seat. and. Um, but a lot of people didn't know she was handicapped. Mm -hmm. They they noticed we carried her in, mm -hmm. but they didn't know she was handicapped. And I was telling you that we, there was a family there. That's the one thing I, I, I hate to say to be kind of thankful for, that when your child's handicap is obvious, people, kids look because they're naturally curious. Mm -hmm. Adults look more like, oh, you know. But then kids that are behavior disordered, or have problems that you can't see on the outside. Right. I feel sorry for those parents because we did have neighbors that had an autistic child, and people look up. I can't believe they can't control. Them. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't work that way. But they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. But with Kelsey, when they see, they feel more sympathy than they do when a child looks normal and they think they just are right belligerent. Yeah. So well, we were talking about the difference between the behavioral. Uh, disabilities um, or social emotional versus the more obvious physical disabilities. It does mm -hmm. impact them. And we have also, I know this sounds 
terrible, but you know, Kelsey's got a good demeanor about it. It's mm -hmm. like with some Down syndrome children. Mm -hmm. you know, they're just so happy. Mm -hmm. And there are ones that aren't. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you get those ones that are just so happy. You just can't help it. Just love them and cuddle them. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's harder for someone to just reach out and grasp for someone who maybe would hit them or bite them or, you know, if they don't know the right. situation. Right. Whereas, you know, Kelsey's kind of got that personality where she's right. like, I kind of want to be with her and yeah. smile. She and, does. You know, at school, like she said, you'll hear her giggle down the hall. It just makes you laugh. Right. In my class, my students will just laugh because, oh, here comes Kelsey. Mm -hmm. You know? And it doesn't help. It helps too, Kelsey, that you're so cute because <laughs> she's, she's, she's very pretty on top of everything else. So, yeah. Um, was there anything else that we want to um, see Kelsey do? I know she, you said she's getting tired and I can see her eyes are kind of glazing over a little. Her um, favorite toy. She has certain toys. This one is an absolute favorite. She <laughs> might be too tired to play it. This was given to her by one of her. Oh, the one thing I would like to say is that your school, situ your school experience is only as good as the teacher you have in the classroom. <laughs> And the pairs they have. She mm -hmm. has the most. I don't think there could be anybody better than what we've got at Wells Fargo, and I mean that. Uh huh. We have Jean Osborne, who's fabulous, and we have three pairs that absolutely love and adore her. And I don't care if you know one of them kind of gets in trouble because she loves to kiss Kelsey goodbye. Uh -huh. I don't care if she loves my kid. Right. And that's what matters to right. us. Right. And that makes it easier for you to go to work, even though oh, yeah. you're um, fortunate enough right now that you and Kelsey are in the same building at work, That's which funny. is a blessing too. Um, but it does make it easier for um, you to carry on your family life, yeah. knowing that everyone is looking out for Kelsey. Um, can you give me just, um, I know you talked about your physical therapist has done a lot in your school building to help with um, uh, adaptations as far as in the bathroom when it came to the... Um, uh, the toilet stall and the sink level or the sink accessibility. Can you think of anything else your speech or um, occupational therapist or physical therapist have done that Do have? Uh, I would say more than anybody, our PT has been the biggest help because like with all these surgeries, mm -hmm. she would always come in and make sure everything's capable for Kelsey to try to do what she was doing before the surgery. Uh, we had a terrible situation with the wheelchair that we got from that's another thing. There's only one wheelchair company, United City Mobility, around here. Uh, it's terrible. They gave us a wheelchair for a 200-pound person. So if you can't guess, Kelsey was lost in it. Uh -huh. So she's from Cappers, the one who comes down. She brought a wheelchair from Cappers. Oh, she good. molded a seat area for her. She, I mean, it was an old chair, but it was better than what we had. Uh -huh. She's just... She's tried to get And that was during her time recovering from her mm -hmm. surgery. Yeah, she's tried to get us on the deaf blind registry so that Kelsey can get mm -hmm. equipment. Mm -hmm. And she has spent many hours doing that on her own time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I just have been very, very. And then we have another man, Mr. R R Rob Taylor. He's coming from Lawrence. He is. Uh, specializes in working with kids and getting them to communicate uh, everything via video. Oh, um, so like an assistive technology kind uh, of specialist? Or? Okay, so yeah, the, um, the um, consultants who come who are um, contracted with the school district. I know um, visually impaired yeah. um, also has, we had, I've worked with some great consultants who are um, from the Kansas City, uh, Kansas City School of Kansas City School of the Blind? I, I'm School of the Deaf. School, yeah, but visually impaired too. They, oh, they're working together now. Oh, they probably are, because I'm thinking the one I know, there's a school the, there's a school for the deaf, because they actually play basketball, uh -huh. um, and I've seen them play. But uh, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about now. We yeah, did. That's his job. He, he goes around and they've been working with Kelsey, and we didn't call It really helps school districts and personnel a lot too, kind of brings in new ideas. and. and, and coordinate it so they're all doing the same mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. and he's got them going back to step one and mm -hmm. some things mm -hmm. which we also talked today uh, in class about Special Olympics, um, and I know um, in your profession um, you've mm -hmm. done a little bit with both the March of Dimes and um, Special Olympics because um, you've worked with your high school kids and volunteering for those those groups. Um, is that something that uh, Kelsey? Uh, what kind of? I know hippotherapy was another thing that she did for a while. What we kind of done extracurricular? We up until this last summer because our hippotherapist father got 
cancer. And so she's had to take care of him. But she absolutely loves hippotherapy. She does swim therapy in the summer. Okay. Which is yeah. To me, those are two of the best therapies. Right. Seen. Yeah. They drink, trunk strengthening is fabulous with both of those. Uh huh. And hippotherapy is really hippotherapy, not horse Ther therapy. Therapeutic writing, yes. right. D totally different. Right. Um, and, and she's had a, an actually a, a very experienced um, hypotherapist, OT, that's worked with her for so quite, she was, quite a few years. Yeah, she was under two, mm -hmm. under two. It's been mm -hmm. a long time. She's been riding the horse for a long time. That is long. She yeah. rides backwards, sideways, on her belly, on her back. It's just amazing <laughs> to do the, watch them do the things they do. And, wh and what do you think she enjoys the most about riding the horses or going the out to the, the movement? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think she likes the horse. She loves the kitties. These kitties are actually, they'll come up close to her and they'll let her touch her. Mm -hmm. Now they don't, they're not real big on the letting her grab them, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they let her touch her. She likes that. She loves animals. Mm -hmm. When she has gone to college, we will probably get her a service dog? Yes. Okay, good. I, I'll i have to talk to you about that because um. Katrina's boyfriend's dad is going off to get his new service dog this week, and uh, it's a it's here in Kansas. It's a Washington County. Yes, Washington. That's right. A little quaint town up yep. in the northern north central part of Kansas. You know right where it's at. Yeah. We found out about him because uh, I took Kelsey to the mall in Topeka one day, and this dog came right up to Kelsey in the middle of the blue. All these other kids were uh -huh. just wanting to touch the dog, but he came to Kelsey and he just sat right there and put his head oh. right there. And the owner came and she said, well, his owner was in a wheelchair mm -hmm. and he had just died oh. a week and a half ago. Oh. And he was trained to go to the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And Kelsey could have done anything, pulled his ears, mm -hmm. he would not flinch. And mm -hmm. he didn't because mm -hmm. she said, just let her go. Right. And did. And and I think that's amazing. a great idea for oh, Kelsey, yeah. especially as she does become closer and closer to adulthood, yeah. to have that mm -hmm. service dog. Mm -hmm. I know the program, uh, from what I understand, it's it's a pretty extensive training. You go it up is. there and live for several weeks at the training center and work with your dog. Um, I don't know, lots of hours, six days it a week. Is, it's really it intense, so. But it's uh, fabulous. The program's wonderful. But yeah, it's up in Washington County. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but that's what we'll probably do when she goes off to college because I think there's going to become a void in her life. Yeah, that's a good and idea. Not and I give her. Be replaced by a dog. <laughs> <laughs> a pretty golden retriever. <laughs> they, are, they are all golden retrievers. Uh -huh. retrievers. All the dogs are. They're black ones, too. I didn't see black ones up there. I thought all they had was golden retrievers. Uh, Matthew's dad said they have black ones too, but you can request not to have a black one because they're difficult to see at night. Uh -huh. um, but that they do have different colors. They have a new color too. He was telling me. Well, Kelsey, I'm going to sign off. You say bye. So I'm going to yes, turn sir. the video off. Your stardom Shh. day has ended for today. You say bye. Bye. You know how to say bye. Hand up. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you, Don. <laughs>